We have uh, a piece of artwork here that was created by my daughter with uh, some help from the teacher, for sure. It's very nice. And then I put the YouTube 1 million subscribers plaque back there because I had to do a virtual interview for a school we want our daughter to go to. And Kate said you should put the 1 million subscriber plaque back there to make your job look more legitimate. And I was like, you know what? For my family, I will do it. She's so right. I also, during the interview, or prior to the interview, I also took the icicles off. Because <laughs> I was like, that does not look professional. The icicles are key. They, re they really tie the room together. Okay, next round, this is going to go crazy. Rip to you, Ottawa Senators, but next year you guys are going to be dangerous. Let me be uh, like a bear boogeyman. No, I didn't drop my sub count during the interview. It was kind of like... I don't know if it um, was positive or negative, but when I was explaining what my wife and I do for work, she said, oh, that sounds like a video that like my kids watch on YouTube. And I was like... That, I think that, don't read into it too much, but it could go either way. Either she's like, wow, you're like part of the uh, industry that pumps that garbage into our house. Or she's like, oh, I understand how you could have like a viable life using that as your business. I chose not to read into it too much. You gotta scrub your Twitter. If they don't want me at my best, they don't deserve me at my worst. You know what? Let's let's go a little crazy here. I don't have anything to say. Also, I think the problem is I've been watching other streamers for like three days. So now I'm doing like my imitation of them. <laughs> I'm just joking. <laughs> nice battles with Chib and movie to movie. Thank you, thank you. I know I said it before. I'm sorry. I've, I've been antagonizing Chibli like a little too much, but um, I really was stunned by the fact that the man knows nothing about film. He knows none movies. Even the movies he's seen, he does not know. I know I already said it, but how do you skip Infinity War? You actually can't craft like a more ridiculous movie to play a skip on in Cine 2 Nerdle. He skipped on Avengers Infinity War. I, yes, he skipped Jurassic Park actually many times. Um, I give him some credit for that just because it came out, you know, like years before he was born. But at the same time, the unforgivable one is that it's the same movie every time. You know, you always start with Jurassic Park. And every single time he played like seven movies with Jurassic in the title off of it that were not Jurassic Park. So he would play like the movie called like Jurassic City. And then there's one called like Jurassic Galaxy. And I would just watch those like wrong answers filter in off the start every single time. And then eventually he would get it. It was like, I mean, it's not a big deal. So he doesn't know movies, but like, it's just, it's more for me that it like shattered my worldview because I thought he knew movies because he has a letterbox with 400 movies on it. Whereas I have a letterbox with eight movies on it. 
So I just assumed, obviously wrongly, that he kind of, he knew what he was cooking. We saw you being a Googling Gary. I was being a chatty Kathy. I was alt-tabbing to, to chat because I would, he would show his letterbox and then in Cine 2 Nerdle, I would only give him movies that he had seen on his letterbox. And when I played it, he would go, Who, what the fuck is this? Who's in this? And then I would go to chat and I would go, what are you talking about? It's like in your top five movies on Letterboxd. I also realize if you look at Chibli's letterbox, like he doesn't treat it in the way that like a normal human being would. A five-star movie on Chib's letterbox is a movie that's bad that he likes ironically, like a high school musical too. And then the four and a half stars, he's never given a movie four and a half stars. Four stars is one of the best movies that Chibli has ever seen in his entire life. That's where like the Banshees of Inna Sharon goes for him. That's where Thoroughbreds goes for him. That's where the menu goes for him. His favorite movies of all time. Three and a half stars doesn't exist. Three stars is I didn't pay enough attention while watching it to feel comfortable saying I didn't like this movie, but I didn't enjoy what I saw. Then there's basically nothing from two and a half down to 0 0.5, and then there's zero, which is like, this is the worst film I've ever seen. Once you learn that and you filter like every rating through that flow chart, you can start to get a, a portrait of a man on fire. No disrespect to this man. You know what? Go ahead. Will we see you in the Streamer Awards nominations? Brother, how would I know? This shit's not rigged. Two free lasagnas, please. This isn't like um, when I went to the end of year assembly in fifth grade and looked out into the stands and I was like, why the heck is my mom here? And then when they were like, the academic achievement award for fifth grade goes to my name and I was like, <gasps> It all makes sense now. That, as far as I know, that shit's being discovered at runtime, bro. Okay, let's do the same thing that has not worked yet again. What could go wrong? Hippo could go right, though. Why did you think your mom was there before you got the award? I mean, I was in the fifth grade. I wasn't thinking too hard about it, but I guess like in my head, I was probably like, she ain't got shit to do, which is not true. She could have been doing lots of stuff. But you know, when you're like nine or 10 years old, you're like, I don't know, if out of sight, out of mind. The heck are we doing here, bro? Did he just humble brag about winning an award in the fifth grade? If, if saying facts is humble bragging, you need to examine that through the lens of your own personal achievements, okay? First off, you're right, there's nothing humble about it. I'm proud of that award. You can tell because I didn't say sixth grade, seventh grade, eighth grade, ninth grade, tenth grade, eleventh grade, twelfth grade. It's because I didn't get those. So of course I'm going to be proud about the fifth grade academic achievement award. But apart from that, I'm just, telling, I'm just telling you the truth as it stands, as it was, Harry Styles style. Can I just get a, a chocolate for you, please? It's exactly what I asked for, and I wasn't happy. What about a, what about a snake? Oh, tiger's good, too, but snake is... Pretty, pretty, big scorpion, I think. I hate to say it, I feel like big scorpion is modestly overrated. No, that's dumb. This is smart. I'd sub to you another month if you play Power World. 
we don't negotiate with terrorists. I'm sorry to say. That might work on some other channels on this website. I am holding my frame. It's not going to come to pass. You're well within... Oh, you're right. I can't scale this Andy if I buy him. You're well within your rights, by the way, to, to demand something like that. I'm simply saying it's not coming to pass. You've stated your boundaries, and I've told you that I'm, I'm respecting them, but I'm taking the under. Imagine. Imagine. The respecter respecter is logged on. I am the angry pumpkin. <laughs> oh. Back shots today, Pharaoh. No, I'm mad at backshots because no one in the content creator Discord plus two'd my amazing tweet. Which wasn't a tweet, it was just a comment in the Discord, but. What was it? Neo colon. Why does my penis hurt? N new line break. Gay Morpheus, comma, taking backshots because you're using it for the first time. They iced me, bro. We lost? <laughs> Why does he have to be gay? Because he's getting butt-fucked by Neo, bro. I guess, okay, fine. Neo, why does my penis hurt? Bisexual Morpheus taking back shots because you're using it for the first time. Thank you, now it's good. Six wins! I hate to say it, you're actually right. Bisexual Morpheus is a, it's an inherently funnier phrase than gay Morpheus. Gay Morpheus is pretty funny, but bisexual Morpheus is way funnier. I also feel like watching the movie, I feel like Morpheus, he kind of gives off like a bisexual aura in the movie. What do you think about that? We got enough time to get into this. Obviously, he has uh, had a previous relationship with Niobe. So that covers one half. But he also, I mean, do you see the way he's serving when he gives that keynote speech at the TEDx Zion uh, sweaty rave in the Matrix 2? Doesn't he wear like a, like a leather vest with no shirt underneath? Machines! <laughs> Actually, you're not wrong. Pretty much everybody gives bisexual vibes in The Matrix. That's very true. Even Agent Smith gives off bisexual vibes, for sure. I'm, like, not the guy to be talking about this. <laughs> oh, that would a bear bush. He does enter Neo in the third one. I, I can't read the comments. You know what? I'm going to read them. I'm not trying to hurt anybody's feelings. But yes, that is the same vibe. So many people typed it. The only person in the Matrix who's not bisexual is Agent Smith. And he's gay, but he's in denial. And that's why he's... It, like It's an outlet... He's not expressing himself true to himself, and that's what causes him to, you know, resort to violence and, and trickery so much.
he's cooking. I'm just saying, that's just the vibe I get. Me, after watching The Matrix for the first time, age 11, bro, what are you talking about? Agent Smith is just a cool kung fu guy. You don't get it, okay? He's a metaphor for not being able to express your sexual identity through the lens of 1990s America, okay? In this eight-hour video essay, I will explain... So true. Bisexual Agent Smith be like, Mr. and Mrs. Anderson. <laughs> it's not even... There's like literally no joke. They love it. It doesn't even make sense. Some of the best jokes don't even make sense, to be honest with you. You're not beating me on this round. Look at this dude, he's 4'8". The hell is a damn scam? When he loses, I'm gonna laugh. The only thing that can make me laugh is that TikTok video of the guy going, he moments. Uh, or, I am the angry pumpkin. Sorceress. <laughs> that gets me every time. A lycanthrope. Hmm. It's good to be back, man. It's good to be back. Your brain is so cooked. Not really. You know how like you have to do puzzles and stuff as you get older to maintain some degree of neuroplasticity and avoid degenerative uh, brain diseases? I'm pretty sure that like streaming and making videos is kind of that for people that are in their 30s. When I talk to like a, another 35 year old, here's what they sound like. Hey, how's it going? Yeah, have a good one. That's basically it. They, they, they're not cooking on the same degree that we're cooking. We're weaving a symphony every single day and that's why we get bullied and ostracized. It is. They're saying stuff like, did you see This Is Us last night? Nobody's saying, Neo, colon, why does my penis hurt? Bisexual Morphe is taking back shots because you're using it for the first time. They just don't possess the, the same capacities. They've grown in different directions. You know, it's like you grow a, a, a watermelon in like a, a glass cube, it becomes a square watermelon. My brain's in a different cage than theirs. Now, it's, it's for worse, but it's also for better in some ways. And when I figure out what those are, you'll be the first to know. Wouldn't it be, why does my ass hurt? Neo is fucking Morpheus in the ass, okay? Morpheus is not fucking Neo in the ass because Morpheus is like Neo's mentor. That would be like a problematic power dynamic. Okay, can you just think about the machinations of this for a minute? You think I haven't considered every possible edge case here? You got no idea what it's like to be the guy. Everything you fucking change changes every facet of every other fucking thing. I'm 
I'm surprised Morpheus is that tight. It's because he's, it's because Neo's using it for the first time. You shouldn't need this much joke explaining. Like the everything, it's like Magic the Gathering. Reading the joke explains the joke. Okay. So does Trinity peg Morpheus? If anything, Trinity would be pegging Neo because they are destined from celestial beings to be intertwined forever. Have you not seen The Matrix 4? This shit was written in cuneiform stone tablets. It was baked into the periodic table at the creation of the universe that there'll be twin stars orbiting each other forever, okay? You don't... You didn't do the required reading before the joke, and now you want me to explain it in the middle of the final exam. And I'm not going to do it. Why should I debase myself on this platform? I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna do it. Anyway. <laughs> Please, I'm begging. What's the punchline for Joke 42? Me taking Jeff Dunham 400 at Clown College? Bro, I forgot. <laughs> Ahmed the Dead Terrorist's most famous punchline is silence, I blank you. Is it A, cancel, B, kill, C, beat, or D, eat. Fuck, I should know this one. Is this a trick question? What's the name of um, Jeff Dunham's old guy puppet again? You know, the one that looks like this. Can I tell you that as soon as I did the face, I remembered it was Walter? <laughs> I was like, I think it's like, it's like Clint or something or Kurt. Then I that went like this. My brain was like Walter face. Put your scowl away, Walter. I'm not going to laugh at you. Not what Mike Ehrmantraut sounds like, by the way. Gets booted. Did you see Mike E. roll the gutter ball? I did not see, um, I'm going to assume, because of my incredible media literacy, that Mike Ehrmantraut went viral this weekend from a video where he bowled badly. Is this correct or false? It was not Mike, it was Dean Norris. What, what people have been spreading lies to me then. That is kind of crazy though, because Dean Norris gives off the vibe of someone who would be really good at bowling. I don't know, Walt. You've been acting pretty sus lately. Almost as if there's an imposter among us. Middle-aged bald dudes go crazy at bowling. Bowling alleys all going out of business has to be like the worst third place that we have lost as a society, right? I would love to go bowling like once every two weeks. Because for me, bowling is like it fulfills almost the same thing as golf, but it requires no expensive equipment. I mean, even like buying a bowling ball has got to be like a hundred bucks at most. And that's molded to your freaking, your fingers. Maybe you buy your own shoes, I guess, but like think of what you need for golf, man. It's relatively low impact. There's physics involved. It's fun. Have a couple tall boys.
But bowling alleys just don't exist. I guess because they take up a ridiculous amount of like indoor real estate. You're kind of selling it. I love, I, I used to bowl in a league from like sixth grade to eighth grade. It was so nice. Saturday morning, go out to the lanes, see your boys, have a couple of Coca-Cola classics at like 9.06 a.m. Then by the time I become an adult, it's like I live in a city with the metro area has like 3 million people and there's like two total bowling alleys. One of them's in Burnaby, which is like a long ass drive. The other one's down on Commercial Drive and I'm not allowed to go there ever since I had a kid. You know, my life is too valuable. No offense, Malik. It's a nice area. It's very cultural. They got great restaurants. I still haven't been to Lunch Lady. Revs is closing, though. There's only one left, man. There's only one left. It's only... What, what, I came, Grandview Lanes? I guess Grandview Lanes is still open. We're actually going to get a 10-piece. I think to myself, what a wonderful world. Oh, the one Granville downtown. Oh, um, I know what you're talking about. That was the one I was in front of uh, that bowling alley while I was waiting for a bus one time. And Kate and I were talking. And then an insane person came up to us and said, uh, hey, do you like this city? And I said, yeah, I like this city. And he said, same. I liked it more when it was quiet. And then he like looked inside of the garbage can next to us and walked off very angrily. You see that video from downtown Vancouver, the person walking around with a knife on their head? That one might be more local news. <laughs> Dad, I, I, I promise you, I said it exactly as it, as it was. Harry Styles' voice. Any tweets on the Chicago rat hole? <laughs> I loved the... Um, so somebody made a tweet with a photo that said there was a gay wedding at the Chicago rat hole today. And then it got quote tweeted with a picture of Bruce Springsteen in concert singing as if he was singing, there's a gay wedding at the Chicago rat hole today. <laughs> and I was like, that's actually, I've been trying to apply Bruce Springsteen voice to like other tweets that I've seen. I've not even come close. Like that is just so perfect. Bruce Springsteen. The Rangers at homecoming in Harlem late last night. Post is limited. Oh, they got death threats. Me when people tell me to kill myself because my joke is good. This is why we can't have nice things. Favorite Bruce Springsteen song? Nuts on the Table. I'm going Jungle Land, track eight off of 1975's Born to Run. There, you're spoiled for choice. There's a lot of great options. Tenth Avenue Freeze Out. That's track two on uh, Born to Run. It's a great song. It wouldn't make my top three on um, Born to Run, but the whole album is nonstop bangers. Number one's got to be Jungle Land. Number two, psh. I mean, Thunder Road and Born to Run are very good, but I might, I, might, I kind of like the back streets as well. You know, the one where he goes, hiding on the back streets, hiding on the back streets, hiding on the back streets. Hiding on the back streets, hiding on the back streets. Well, all right, who got a trap, 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 got a hump? Hiding on the back streets, hiding on the back. You know that one? You're gonna be like, that was horrible. Go listen to the song. You're gonna be like, that was a fucking really good impression of the end of Back Streets.
Pretty accurate. Ooh, couch medicine hitting. Me when I'm an upholsterer. You made a typo. POV, you made a typo in NL's chat. Sorry, I typed that shit. I didn't think anyone would read it. Oh. By the way, 10 piece. We win these. I'm God's chosen child. Born to run. My, a, a lot of people, I, all I want is for you to not think of Bruce Springsteen the same way you think of you two, okay? If we can achieve that today, then I will have given something back to the culture that's given so much to me. Bruce Spring, Springsteen is a, I did almost call him Springsteen. Lion fries in the chat. Bon Jovi better than Bruce Springsteen. You don't appreciate art. You think that uh, music is a commodity. You are a uh, wedding DJ. And Bruce Springsteen, he's Tom York. The Zoomers have decided you 2 sucks and Springsteen goes hard. I can accept that. For me, Born to Run is like in a very small pantheon of albums that you can play at any given time, front to back, and enjoy the entire thing. Born to Run, Paul Simon's Graceland, Bell and Sebastian, If You're Feeling Sinister, Lou Reed, Metal Machine Music, Beethoven's Fifth Symphony, Blood on the Tracks. Oh, oh, now you're talking. Now you're talking. Does Born to Run have a good funeral song on it? Is that a prerequisite for an album being good? Is having a, a good funeral song on it? Hang on. I've got to respond to this. <clears throat> oh, I hate selling Bell and Sebastian. So overrated, IMO. Stuart Murdoch has an incredibly grating voice. I get why people like them, but I was expecting more based on how people love them. POV, you are born in the year 2005 and breathlessly trying to discover all of the music made before you were born, going to rateyourmusic.com, sorting every year by best albums, top 25 best albums, listening to them all through once while scrolling through Twitter on the other monitor. Whoa, why do people like Bell and Sebastian so much? You weren't there, brother! You weren't there, okay? That being said, I don't know how to explain why Bell and Sebastian is good. At least why, if you're feeling sinister, is one of the best albums of all time. I think it's because it sounds like um, music Charlie Brown would make if he was depressed. Every song has that sort of like do 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 do. It sounds like music that Charlie Brown would dance to. Charlie Brown is depressed. Depressed people in 1961 be like, oh, bother. One second, I'm going to go get some water. Oh, bother. think could that be a great tweet what's the point of drinking water I'm just gonna have to piss later anyway they're saying it's the worst tweet ever news lady voice experts are calling it the worst tweet ever made kids these days will never understand when YouTube was just me at the zoo, Charlie bit my finger, 
and top 10 news anchor fails of March 2007. Those were the days, man. Those were the days. Why are you crying? My, my, my freaking voice hurts, bro. I freaking kills. My throat's like, there's too much shit on me. Do, 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 do. He does sound like Beetlejuice. Yeah, but Beetlejuice is based. Didn't he say that sexual pleasure was a gift from... Oh, that's the Pope! That's the Pope, my mistake. Did you see that there's two black holes on the sun that are now pointed directly at the, uh, the Earth? What do you guys think about that? Did you see that there's two black holes on the sun pointed directly at the Earth? Those are sunspots? I don't know, brother. I'm no uh, chemist, but they look like black holes to me. Maybe you can believe the media, whatever. They're sunspots? When I was a kid, they were called black holes. And there was lead in the damn pipes. Thanks, I needed more dread. I was today years old when I found out that black holes are now called sunspots. How many IQ points do you think you lost to the lead? I'm 35 years old, bro. My ass was not drinking from lead pipes, at least not for long. Because, like, I feel like they started to take lead plumbing out in like the 50s and the 60s in America which means that it probably got to rural Canada by like 1990 so I don't think I was I was drinking too much leaded water at least I definitely there are some like building materials that were in houses I grew up in that should not have been used like when I grew up the house that my parents rented for like the first six years of my life had that those like I don't know how to describe it. It was like a fluffy ceiling. Like, it was kind of stucco. I'm just hoping it wasn't asbestos. <laughs> Popcorn ceiling? Yeah, hang on. Let me, let me just go. Popcorn ceiling. Also known as a stipple ceiling. That, this is it. Made of a variety of spray-on or paint-on treatments. It's caused by tiny particles of vermiculite or polystyrene. It has diminished significantly across North America. Oh, nothing in this says health consequences, class action lawsuits, etc., etc. It's possible to find asbestos in popcorn ceilings that were applied throughout the 1980s. Well... That house was probably built in like the 1950s, so there's a chance. But it, at least it wasn't like pure asbestos. It seems like it was like an alloy. I'm not coping. I mean, like... But the thing is, I was doing the same shit when I was 15 that you're doing now. You're like, whoa, how much asbestos did you breathe in? When I was 15, I was like, whoa, look at all these... Uh, imagine the, the, being like 12 years old and smoking cigarettes in like the 1970s. Uh, and then, like, in 10 years, 15-year-olds are going to be like, 
imagine drinking water out of a plastic bottle, right? Like it's, we're all gradually finding out the health consequences of things, but the, the knock-on effects happen so late and are so complicated that like you only find out after the damage is already done. So it's like, what are you going to do? You might as well have a sense of humor about it. Like, I can't go back to 1997 and be like, stop throwing your Nerf soccer ball into the ceiling and then breathing in the particles that fall off. <laughs> All I'm saying is my generation was legit breathing in the chemicals. Oh, yeah. This is fucked, bro. I gotta do this. It makes no sense at all. No, you don't have, you could do this. I'm pogging, I'm chilling, I'm bisexual Morpheus. People in 2060 be like, oh, Skibbity? So true. Skibbity Toilet, that's a name I've not heard for a long time. My father was Skibbity. Please, just call me Toilet. I think we're chilling, bro. Is this camera a little crooked? Everything about the stream is a little crooked today, bro. It's Wednesday. What does it mean? Shark tissue that I wish you saw. Sarcastic Mr. Know-it-all. Close your eyes and I'll kiss you. Cause with the birds I'll share. Right, this is Anthony Kiedis at his uh, deposition. When you shit, do you flush a $20 bill to the toilet gods? I've been doing this, like, this business for too long. Because that is something my mom told me that my grandfather did. And now you heard me relay the story from my mom to you. You have then internalized it, but forgot the original source. And then two years later, come back and parroted it to me as if it's something that I'm not familiar with. Do you see how fucked up this is? This is like when a, a meme gets, um, you know, save, 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 bid crush, bid crush, save, 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 and then nobody even remembers like where it originally came from. It's not a loop, it's a spiral. He's Rust Coal posting. Does that happen? Anybody in uh, chat a famous stand-up comedian? Does that happen to famous stand-up comedians? Do people come up to you and say your own joke back to you? Jerry Seinfeld in chat? Jerry, get out of here. People are going to be very, they're going to cyber bully you. You deserve it, but I'm just trying to, you're, you're an old man. I don't want you to suffer the consequences of your actions on the internet, okay? Just get out of here before... Jerry, you gotta save yourself! Get in your car, go get some coffee, okay? Lemmy told me that he always gets people quoting his sketch show at him. I guess you take the good with the bad. I think it's one thing to be like, you know, hey, that joke that you did, 
was really funny. Then they'd be like, thank you for your kind words. But to just run up to Limmy and say like she's turned the wings against us, that's gotta get old. <laughs> like after the zero with time. Mr. Ten Piece logging on. Lemmy loves it, chatters keep doing it. Well, I love that for him then. I've been enjoying his Dark Souls 2 clips. I know I've said it many times. Lemmy, Lemmy is one of the people on the planet that's funny enough that it pisses me off. You motherfucker, you fucking 49 HP motherfucker, you. Like, I, there's no explanation for why this is funny. but I, And maybe the explanation is that I was penjamined up on the Benelin Mucinex yesterday. But um, I, I laughed at this Limmy Dark Souls clip for like... It had to be at least like five minutes straight, if I could find it. This is... It, it's ten seconds long. I laughed at it for at least 10x that length. Careful. I, don't just stand in front of him, John! No, 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 no! It's just him dying to, uh, like, a, a mini-boss in Dark Souls 2, but just the way he says it is so good. Careful. I, don't just stand in front of him, John! No, 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 no! <laughs> Kiss me every time. Mm. Ooh, been drinking it for years. Whoops, I meant to freeze the meat. Me when I wonder why I have salmonella again. You're really gonna make me lose to a guinea pig? That's like, that's my move, bro. Nah. Well. Come on, come on, give me some support here. Chibli nomination at the Streamer Awards. We're so back, Chibli fans. Nominated for best. Movie streamer. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Nominated for Rising Star. So we love our Chibli, don't we, folks? Hang on. We go, I got time to do one more real fast. Big news for Chibli, because now he has a great excuse to fly back to Los Angeles. Look how delicious seed. And buy vegan burritos from Erewhon. Me doing speech exercises. Vegan burrito. Erewhon vegan burrito. Aragon vegan three bean burrito. Erewhon vegan three bean burrito. There was a fire in the frozen food section at Erewhon today. Experts say they lost three dozen vegan three bean burritos. Come on, man! Is this an English exercise? You ever see My Fair Lady? With Dr. Doolittle? No? One second. I'm going in. <laughs> what am I doing? I wouldn't expect you to understand it, okay? Ooh. 
luckiest guinea pig of all time. Stack me. Stack me. Meet me. I will get you next time. Take one of these. This is going to be the fastest run of all time. I only have six minutes and I've got to get ten wins, okay? Another famous uh, tweet for you from this week while I was away. Did you see the... Um, reality, uh, augmented reality vacuuming that said this will change the game for doing chores and it made like a translucent green overlay on your floor and then as you vacuumed, the green went away? Oh, brother. Hang on, this is a big moment for us. Bison? So hype. Me, me charging up my... <laughs> my headset and strapping it on so that I can be sure that I've vacuumed 100% of the microscopic dust off of my uh, floor. Spoilers, there will be new dust on it in three seconds uh, regardless of what you do. I saw the, the one tweet that said, this person fails to understand vacuuming is all about vibes. They actually have it 100% right. Some chores, doing the dishes is about getting everything perfectly clean. I don't think anybody would disagree with that. You want your dishes to be clean, as clean as possible. You don't want visible you know, food stains or anything like that. Vacuuming, you just do it till it feels right. I mean, if you spill something, you, you vacuum it up. When it comes to vacuuming your whole house, you do it till it looks right. You don't have to, you know, hit every single nook and cranny according to the Apple Vision Pro. In my, my personal context, at least. Shouldn't Roombas be square, by the way? I swear to you, I'm not just doing a, how do they get the juice out of the corners bit, but like, how do they vacuum the corner? Like, I feel like they do a pretty good job. They've been out for a while and everybody's still like, you know, pretty positive on the Roomba. Should corners be round? Why don't live in fucking the USS Enterprise, bro? Cut me some slack. I don't live in Austin Powers' house. I feel like to some extent the Roomba must just be pushing the dirt into the corner and then like never picking it up though. Ah, he's doing his best. I'll, I'll lay off him. What are we doing here? What are we cooking? What are we cooking? Freaking fine, bro. Just gotta give me something at least. What about the Roombas that took pictures of the women pooping? What are you talking about? Hold. What about them? Why do I need more context for the story, bro? Sunk cost fallacy. Give me some scaling foods, bro. Oh, you know what? Give him one of those. Feed him shit and keep him in the dock. Cameras on the Roombas were being sent to servers. The Roombas have cameras on them? I thought it was all like, uh, it was like LiDAR. If they got cameras, they should be a lot better at vacuuming. Some do. They got microphones on them? <laughs> so, no, no, the microphone is good. So that when it goes over to like, um, the poop that the dog left on the ground, you could be like, oh, Roomba, stop!
And then they sweep the poo-poo. I was going to have that later. That's foul. That's disgusting. My ass late. Don't worry, I'm, I'm coming, I'm coming. It's code names. Everyone relax. I'm coming. Don't even worry about it, bro. What would a type C chatter be? Type A chatter, plus two. Type B chatter, you really bought a croissant just to replace it with a carrot one round later? Shake my head. Type C chatter, Neo, why does my penis hurt? Bisexual Morpheus taking back shots because you're using it for the first time. It's just hot boy toke. It is. <laughs> Gay Jar Jar Binks be like, Misa so happy to suck your dick. <laughs> you might think that I hadn't seen them. I see it all. I see everything. <laughs> Some things I just choose not to respond to. Dutch Jar Jar Binks. We have an even big problem. I know what you're talking about. I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down. Let's just throw one of these on there. Oh, man. We're actually going to get to 10. I can't believe it. I <laughs> just keep replacing the foods, man. It's like the least efficient spender of all time. Level 3 guinea pig badge incoming! Please! The math is mathing? No! Okay, wait, hold, hold. Stake me. Brother, look at the squad. Look at the squad. We got four steaks and a carrot. It's like Sin Victor when he posts pictures of his dinner. Hi, yo! We're all friends here. We're just, it's just banter, lads. It's just banter. Level three guinea pig. Just a bit of banter. Relax, it's called dark humor. 